Hey, it's Dean here. Uh, I'm just going to do a quick video to help you if you're a coach and you want to get clients from LinkedIn. There is a lot of bullshit out there about how to do it. Uh, so I'm going to share with you some real important things that you should be doing for uh, your uh, to get clients from LinkedIn, to get coaching clients from LinkedIn. Now, number one here. I am not going to advocate you do anything that's against the terms of service of LinkedIn, and I'll tell you why. There are many people who say, just send as many connection requests to as many people as possible and message them and say, hey, do you want this? You know, hit people up. Connect and try and hit people up. Uh, not only is it a bad business practice, but it can get your account banned or restricted. LinkedIn's terms of service make it very clear that you should not be doing that kind of activity, trying to solicit people for business that you don't know and haven't got a relationship with. So I'm going to share with you a few quick tips that will help you. If you want some more help, there's a couple of things you can do. First, we have a free download guide that will help you, give you some of this stuff in more details. I'll put the link in the description, but also we have courses we run around the country which go, which go into intensive detail about how to go and build relationships with people and convert them into paying customers. Uh, they're three hour intensive sessions and they are top rated on uh, Trustpilot and raved about by businesses up and down the UK and into Europe. So let's get started. I'm going to talk to you about a couple of things that you need to do immediately to sort out your LinkedIn. Number one, make sure that your, uh, your graphics on your profile are top notch. Get something here, your profile picture is really clear so people can identify who you are and that your headline here really communicates what you do and who you do it for. So make sure if you're targeting business owners, uh, it says something about business owners and the value and outcomes you can help them achieve. It Make sure your imagery represents the outcomes and values you can achieve. Really important. Uh, the three things that follow your profile, every, uh, of your profile, that follow you everywhere you go are your profile picture, your name and your headline. Those three things are on every post, on every comment, on every message, everywhere you go. Make sure you use them and use them well. Second to that, and if you visit my profile, you want to check me out, please do follow. I share stuff every day that will help you uh, secure more clients and grow your business and really build a compelling message for your ideal customers. So as we go through the profile here, um, you've got... Um, your headline here, which mine is MD at Maverick, speaker, win on LinkedIn, next level masterclass, sales marketing strategy. And then I've put, because I'm over 30K, 30K people click follow and you've got a follow button if you look at my profile. Make sure you fill out this about section here with some compelling information about what you can do for your target customer. Don't fill it with CV waffle, make sure it's there and complete. Um, that's really, really important. The next thing that's really important, and your profile, the reason I'm talking about your profile as this first stage here, is because your profile really has a bearing on who sees you. If you have an incomplete profile, if you're not investing the time in the profile, people will not engage with you. So if you've got no profile picture, if your headline's not great, people will th consider them before they engage with you, whether they send you a connection request, whether they decide to accept your connection request, whether they respond to a message. A lot of that is weighted by your profile. And the better your profile is, the more likely they are to respond. The other thing is that when you go onto your profile, you've got some status here. I've got all star status. If you've not got all star status, it means your profile isn't complete. Uh, and if you have an incomplete profile, it's less likely that you're going to be found in searches. Uh, LinkedIn is like a dating service. It's matching people up all the time. As people are going through their LinkedIn, LinkedIn's suggesting people. Make sure your profile's complete so people will find you. It's really important as well that you make sure your search appearances. 
you're being found for the right words. So when you click your search appearances, you can see the companies that have found you and you can see the titles are the right people looking and then the keywords that you're being found for. So make sure you look at the keywords that you're being found for and adapt your profile. Make sure your keywords you're on your profile are rich for the target clients you're trying to reach. So that's number one. Number two, when it comes to posting, you should be looking to share different types of content. I call this the content sandwich, and it's essentially you're mixing the content up for different op different uh, different reasons. You need to create some content that engages people and interests people, and you need to create some content that really tells people about the value you can deliver with call to actions and buy this or sign up or what have you. But you have to hold the two of them in tension. If you do too many engagement posts, you become a really nice person, but nobody knows exactly what you do or nobody knows how to buy from you. And if you go the other way, sell, 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 nobody will engage with you and nobody will see you. Your posts, when you post on LinkedIn, your post is not automatically seen by your first connections. So engagement posts are really important because they can help you get seen by your connections. And generally speaking, on all social media platforms, if you're engaging with people on a regular basis, the platform will encourage you to be uh, your post to be seen by those people more often. So if you're trying to communicate the value of your coaching services, you need to make sure you're producing engagement posts which are related to the themes of what your coaching can do, but maybe more broad so it draws a, a more interest from lots of people. Make sure that those posts also pose a question, invoke an emotional response. They demand an answer because if you don't demand an answer, why would somebody comment? Why would somebody comment if you didn't want their opinion? Why would somebody comment on the same stuff all the time? Mix it up and bring a bit of variety, but keep the themes tied to what you do. So if you talk, help people be more productive, you can share lots of things about and different ways of how productivity works and how efficiency can work. You don't have to stick to one particular thing day in, day out, because you just bore people. So that's the other thing, is make sure your content is diverse, engaging, and promoting engage and promote. In one of my workshops I do on content, I talk about the three goals your content should be doing. These are awareness, engagement, and conversion. And you have to construct content for the three. Uh, where if you want people to be signing up to your coaching courses and coaching programs, you need to be doing the three. In another course, I talk about the pain points. Um, just to touch on these, is using pain points in content can be very powerful about getting relevance to almost get people to think, wow, it's almost like this post was written for me. So pain points, have a look at that. Pain points are really powerful in helping you uh, define and create content that really gets people to take action. So posts, mix them up. Use a content sandwich, alternate from engagement and promotion, engagement and promotion, sales posts and engagement posts, mix them up. And then finally, make sure you're active. Uh, engage with people. Don't just use LinkedIn as a broadcast channel. If you just hit people up and, and say, here's my world, here's my world, here's my world, you're not building any interconnectivity with people. No relationships are happening. And that's how this whole thing works. All business is done on the basis of rapport, awareness, uh, and trust. And you've got to get out there and build trust. And that means you need to be seen not just as what you're doing, but interacting on the network. So if you're targeting production managers and you want to provide them with coaching or managing directors about time management or life coaching for busy executives or whatever it is, even personal fitness, you need to engage with people in a meaningful way that's relevant to them. Not, as some people do, just comment on other people's posts, hey, do you want this coaching program? Or I'm running this and I think it'd be perfect for you. Have meaningful interactions with your target audience. Even if you're not connected, build those relationships in the comments that you uh, put on their posts and not 
propaganda or spam comments. So uh, these are a couple of tips for you with your coaching uh, clients and how to get more clients from LinkedIn using uh, some key strategies. Make sure your profile is sorted out. Make sure your posts are mixed and variable. Make sure you're engaging with the audience you want to do business with and not just expecting them to come to your shop front. Um, these are the things, there's no quick wins in this, but there are systems you can use. And these are my free tips to help you get coaching clients from LinkedIn. If you want the full training, you can sign up for our course uh, or our free download book below. And if you're really adventurous, you can book a one-to-one -one session with me and I will supercharge your LinkedIn and show you how in 30 days you can close 10 coaching clients with LinkedIn.